Good morning. It's Thursday, August 6, 2015. This is Tech Talk Today, episode 203, and my name is Chris. And guess what? We got some stories to get into today, so let's bring in our mumble room in a three, in a two. Time appropriate greetings, mumble room. Hello. Hello. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Hey, just uh, we got some security news that this because it is the lead up to DEF CON and all those kinds of things. But first... A couple of little uh, low-hanging fruits I just want to whack off and maybe chew as we walk down the trail of news today. Apple Music announces they have 11 million trial customers, and Chris wonders how many of them will stick around after October. Not a bad number, though, 11 million. Uh, we're not sure, but that's not too bad. Also, by the way, turns out 2 million have opted for that family share plan. Not as big as people expected, but something else came up recently. Apple is licensed for a four additional streaming radio stations. So we may have Beats 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 someday in the future. Okay, there's your first low-hanging fruit story. Mumble Room, any comments in 3, in 2? All right, next low-hanging fruit story of the day. The NSA tried Stuxnet cyber attack types uh, of attack against North Korea five years ago but failed. I love this just because there's so many stories about China hacking us and Russian aggression and the uh, Syrian electronic army and... Really, when it comes to serious cyber warfare, you know, stuff that destroys centrifuges, jumps air gaps, infects machines with thumb drives, involves secret agents implanting malware, nobody, ain't nobody doing it like the good old U.S. of A., my friends. That's right. In fact, we got to bust out the eagle just for that one. Yeah, so the U.S. tried to deploy a version of Stuxnet computer virus to attack North Korea's nuclear weapons. Nuclear got to say it like that. Nuclear. you got to say it nuclear. That really bugs people. Nuclear weapons. <laughs> Five years ago, but ultimately failed, according to people familiar with the covert campaign. The operation began in tandem with the now famous Stuxnet attack that sabotaged Iran's nuclear program in 2009. And uh, now remember, so there was, in TechSnet, we talked about this, there was, there was some, some uh, people that were guessing that there was another parallel program being developed because it looked like shared code methodologies were being used. So this would be the other piece of that. And it only, only unfortunately, it, f- it apparently failed because uh, North Korea had more properly isolated their communications network. And um, just owning a computer requires police permission. And the open internet is pretty much unknown. So it's pretty much unavailable. So it was much harder to get in there. Uh, of course, uh, the Guardian did try to contact the NSA, but the NSA declined to comment. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. So we're, <clears throat> we weren't just targeting Iran. We were also going after uh, North Korea, which makes sense. You know, we're worried about their uh, nukes. So uh, we've got to drop something in the water to go after them. I wonder how many other places we've done Stuxnet like. And, you know, the, the, the hypocrisy that the U.S. could be exposed for if stuff like this comes out while we're slamming other nations. Um, I, uh, that, that, that could uh, look very embarrassing for the U.S. of A. All right, so let's switch gears. Now we've got to get into the security. Now we've, we've just chewed on the uh, low-hanging fruit on our trail, and now we're walking into the rocky territory of security as we're about to approach the week of DEF CON. Now hackers can remotely steal fingerprints from Android phones is the headline that's making news this morning. This one's over at ZDNet. Super light on the details, guys. So do not get super worked up about this. But here's what we do know from this rather light article at this point in time. The threat, as they call it, is contained to Android devices. It does not affect iPhones with fingerprint sensors. Uh, the proof of concepts have been demonstrated on uh, Samsung Galaxy S5s and HTC One Maxes. But they believe also Hawaii and HTC devices, well, they did try it on HTC One Max to be vulnerable, but other HTC devices with a uh, fingerprint sensor. Uh, so they go on to say the attack, which was confirmed on the HTC One and Max and Samsung Galaxy S5, allows a hacker to stealthily acquire a fingerprint image from an affected device because the device makers don't fully lock down the sensor, making matters worse. So essentially, they're, they're a separate process can also access the fingerprint reader while you're getting your fingerprint read, is what I'm assuming. That's my assumption, though. Making matter worse, the sensor on some devices is only guarded by the system privilege instead of root, making it an easier target. In other words, rooting or jailbreaking your phone can leave you at a greater risk. Once the attack is in place, the fingerprint sensor can, can continue to quietly collect fingerprint data on anyone who uses the sensor. Uh, yeah, so that's what they're working at right now. The researchers did not comment on which vendor is more secure than others, but they did note that the Apple iPhone, which pioneered the f- fingerprint, is quite secure as it encrypts the finger fr- fingerprint data from the scanner and actually doesn't even expose it to the OS, which is a better approach. Um, anybody in the mumble room have a device they unlock with their fingerprints at this point, or is this not really something that's trickled down to most users? 
Yeah, I got myself a Windows phone at the moment. It does not have fingerprint sensors. Uh, uh, and how is the Windows phone working? Windows Phone 8.1. I've I had I had to kind of hack denim onto it, but it's a much smoother experience. It's quicker to use. Uh, there's less apps, of course, but I don't use that many apps anyway. But it is actually a much smoother, sure, sure. more efficient interface. And anybody else in the room have a fingerprint device? So I've got the S6 and the iPhone 6, and they both have fingerprint readers. So uh, that's something I use quite a bit. In fact, I kind of think once you have it, you won't go back. It is like to, to be able to purchase like your apps with your fingerprint is really nice. Not having to enter large, complex passwords, and I can also use it as a, just another set of authentic. So I have on uh, on my last pass vault, I have my master password, I have my one-time uh, authentication two-factor key, and then I have a fingerprint sensor. Like three levels of passwords to get to my to get to my password vault on my mobile device, and that's pretty nice. Nobody. Okay. Well, so this is not, I, th I don't think this is, out of all the exploits we've talked about recently, this is the one I'm sort of the least worried about because the process is going to have to run with system level privileges. That's somehow going to have to be done. And it would have to be running in the background, monitoring the sensor. It's going to have, well, this is one of the benefits of Android fragmentation is each one has a different sensor, probably from a different OEM or different whatever. So it's going to be a little trickier. It does sort of play in, though, to the bigger picture we've been talking about, and that's Android fragmentation and the lack of updates. Well, today, Google announced that it's going to give monthly updates to Nexus users. Google is making good on its promise to fix a big problem in its Android operating system. Researchers had found a major flaw that would let hackers take over smartphones with just a text message. Now Google is rolling out a brand new system to fix that bug and others that may pop up in the future. NPR's Arthi Shahani reports. Adrian Ludwig, lead engineer for Android security, is in Las Vegas today at Black Hat, a cybersecurity conference. Android is the most popular operating system on Earth for smartphones. In a presentation on stage, Ludwig compared it to the United States of America and his speech to the State of the Union. The Union is a complicated one. There are over a billion users of Android devices. Google makes Android. Many companies manufacture smartphones that run on Android, and carriers like Verizon and T-Mobile tweak those phones for their own apps. It's perhaps unprecedented. Nearly every other platform is a closed platform uh, in a way that Android has strived not to be. Being open and having all these layers of partnership can make it very hard to fix a problem. And in the world of software, there's always going to be a problem. Last Monday, researchers announced a major flaw that would let hackers take over Android phones via text message. Today, Ludwig made an announcement. Speaking on behalf of the Android union, he says, Google and other phone makers are rolling out what may be the largest software update the world has ever seen. Samsung, HTC, LG, Motorola... Effectively, every consumer name associated with uh, mobile devices delivering updates. And going one step further, Google will begin conducting regular updates about once a month for its Nexus smartphones. Ludwig says the company is creating a new industry standard. People have been looking for clear communication about Android from a security standpoint. It now exists. And I think this is, a, this is really a watershed moment uh, for us as an industry. Brian Glancy, a security researcher with Optio Labs, used to work for Samsung. He says a coordinated system for Android security is long overdue. Consider this comparison. If you fix a, a problem on Apple, it goes to all Apple devices and you've done it one time, right? But if you want to fix a problem on Android, you've got to fix every variant of Android. And to do that, Google must coordinate with many manufacturers. Glancy says by doing so, the company hopes to decrease the public perception that Android phones are less safe than iPhones. Arthi Shahani, NPR News, Las Vegas. Okay, so is this a watershed moment? What do you guys think? Now, before you go too much further, also, I have uh, the official Android post, uh, uh, the Android blog post in the uh, show notes. Also, Samsung today is announcing that uh, it will also soon implement Android security update process that tracks mobile security patches over the air. And then it says they're going to also attempt to issue device, device updates. Uh, now, we'll see. We'll see if they can really s stick to, push to monthly, but that's what they say. Uh, that they're going to try to do monthly updates to, Sam to certain Samsung devices over the air. You guys think this is really going to happen? Is this the big watershed moment? What do you think, Mumble Room? Well, companies, I think that the providers are to blame for 
holding back updates for months at a time for Android devices. The, the, I've experienced that in the past where the phone I had on Verizon eight months after the 4.4.4 update was released, I got the update. But eight months after the Android 5 was released, I still didn't get it, so that's why I got a Windows phone. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, boy, right? Yeah, the thing is right now is it's not too uncommon with an Android device is maybe you get one, two updates in its entire life cycle, and then that's kind of it for some people. This would be a huge change. And think about the personnel infrastructure Samsung is going to have to have to be able to develop and, and turn these patches around. I, I Google obviously probably already has that, but it seems like that's been the huge problem for Samsung. And the question is, will all the others truly follow up? This, the only reason why I'm a little skeptical is because this was announced two years ago, Google I.O. as well, and then it never actually really materialized. Not the same thing, but something similar to that. And, uh, I, yeah, I hope this happens. And if nothing else, I bet it happens with the Nexus devices, and it's really going to give them another huge competitive advantage over the other devices, and that alone might encourage them to step up their game. So that could be a really good thing. All right, speaking of mobile, our friends over at Ting have an important announcement up on their blog. They're playing it safe. They, they saw some suspicious activity on their network, and they're asking people to go reset their passwords. Um, they say that uh, some uh, hoodwinks tried to get into Ting, and they have no evidence of any accounts being accessed or sen sensitive details being lifted. But believe us, they've taken a look. Uh, they can say, as you can imagine, though, our security network engineers are working overtime, but they still think it's probably a good time if you're a Ting customer to go change your password. Um, so yeah, go take a look. It's on the Ting blog. You can go to ting.com slash blog for more information about that. I'd like to get your opinion on Google's big announcement today. Go to techtalktoday.reddit.com and look for this episode 203 and uh, leave your feedback. Also, any stories you want to suggest or recommend, those are great. Kickstarters of the week, go ahead and link them there as well, techtalktoday.reddit.com. And don't forget you can join us live over at jblive.tv. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, and we also could use your support over at patreon.com slash today. We picked up one patron. Whoop, 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 whoop. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the network over at patreon.com slash today. All right, so we're going to get out of here, and the chat room's been having some fun picking on Microsoft this week. I promise, I'm not picking these clips. It's all the chat room, and when I saw this one, you know, uh, I, I had to watch. I still have a soft spot for old Dave. And uh, this was Dave uh, kind of uh, just kind of being nonchalant about Bill Gates. And the whole thing just made me laugh. And the chat room picked this one. And I thought it made a great end of show clip. See you back here tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for watching. How about that Bill Gates? Uh, here's a guy. If you got a computer, you know who Bill Gates is. And uh, he's, he's like a, a billionaire a billion times over. And he, uh, he invented the Microsoft uh, thing. And as a result, he's, uh, he's uh, terribly wealthy. And in two years, he's going to retire. He's going to step down from his daily routines at Microsoft. And now, uh, in honor of all he's done for the computer industry, uh, Microsoft is releasing this celebratory announcement. In 1975, Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard to start his own software company. Little did he know that Microsoft would become one of the world's most powerful corporations, generating annual revenue of 40 billion. Oh, crap. Hold on. I can fix this. Son of a bitch. So long, Bill. From all your pals at Microsoft. That's exactly right. <laughs>